Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas. This is Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii. Today I have uh, Randall Tanaka, who is the executive director of the IUCN's World Conservation Congress Committee, or something like that. National Host Committee. National Host Committee. I, I knew that was too short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be more, more uh, letters in that one. That's all right. We do it all. We do it all. <laughs> and uh, uh, Randall is very qualified for this job because he's the one who put together the um, our uh, biggest international conference ever to date, the APEC convention that was um, four years ago. Well, I was one of the guys. The, okay. the CEO was a gentleman by the name of Greg Yamanaka. And uh, the guys that really led the charge was uh, Peter Ho, president of Bank of Hawaii, CEO president, and Tim Johns, uh, who is now with Hawaii Medical. But they were really the, the leadership. The letterhead. Yeah, no, no, the, le the leadership, truly. And, but it was a great team. We had a great team. So um, how, how did we get so lucky? Um, you know, I, sometimes there's a gentleman on Kauai. His name is Chipper Wickman, and he is head of the National Tropical Botanical Gardens. And one of his visions was to have this Congress hosted here in Hawaii. It's never been to the United States. Uh, so there's only one first time, and, and Hawaii becomes the first uh, to host a Congress for the United States. And Chipper had this vision and dream that this Congress could uh, bring the significant global issues at our doorstep and give us the opportunity to show the rest of the world all the great things we do, not only in conservation, but species management and all the things that at the end of the day matter. So Chipper was really the, the driving force, is the driving force. And he's still, act, I would imagine he's very actively involved. So sure. what is his role at this point? He is our vice chair of our board uh, and host committee. Uh, he is really the primary contact with the IUCN, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, who is the organization that runs the World Conservation Congress. I, um, I was in, in Europe this past summer and um, they, they all know about that. Like, <laughs> not, not everybody knows about that so much here, but when mm -hmm. you, you throw that name out there, you know, it's, it's significant. It has a lot of, has a lot of weight. Um, and, and most of the countries, at least in, in Western Europe, are mm -hmm. very active. And they, even the small countries have, you know, 60 delegates, I think, like France and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, organizations. Yes. And here in the United States, we have 85. Well, actually, the United States is the largest member organization of IUCN. Uh, the organization is 70 years old, or 68, when, when it comes to Hawaii, it's 70 this year. Um, it's, yes, Eurocentric. But for the last uh, two years, uh, it's had an Asia-Pacific focus. It was in Jeju, Korea in 2012, uh, and now Hawaii. Uh, so the Asia Pacific arena is playing a more uh, a, a bigger position in it. Um, and Jeju know. was was very um, important. Um, it, I mean, it's a, a very important place environmentally now. There's mm -hmm. a big conflict there between the military and the uh, mm -hmm. locals. And uh, w how did the uh, IUCN affect them? I think one of the one of the more interesting positions that IUCN takes is really let's let's sit down and talk about it. So it's not an exclusion process, um, unless clearly there are lines that have been drawn to say you know you're 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 doing some pretty evil things. So you know until you kind of clean up your stuff, you're welcome. But can you make progress in some of the issues that concern us as a as a conservation organization. Uh, Jeju, um, there was a consideration for a military base to be built in this marine sanctuary. Uh, that discussion is active and, and ongoing, but IUCN welcomed the discussion. They did not push away the protests. Uh, so, so, you know, you have to have that dialogue. And makes, that's what one of the things that make IUCN a great organization. Progress, not perfection. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. and keeping the conversation going is, really keeping the breath. Yeah, it, 
you know, and, and there's so many issues happening in Asia PAC now. You know, one thing we learned from, from APEC is, you know, 60% of the, the global economy sits in Asia Pacific. So it's an arena that needs to have the discussions about conservation because you, you can't victimize the place. So let's make sure there's considerations for conservation and the environment and all of that. So this morning, I saw you at uh, DLNR's um, uh, boardroom because you were there with uh, Justice Antonio Benjamin, who's mm -hmm. here visiting, um, because he's playing a big role. Can you talk about that? Correct. Environmental law, Chief, uh, or Justice Antonio, uh, is probably one of the premier jurists in environmental law. Uh, and so he is part of the one of the areas of IUCN is is environmental law, uh, one of the commissions, and and they discuss these issues on a global matter. Um, uh, Justice Mike Wilson is also involved in the Congress, and I don't know if you know Mike's history, but he was one of the key people involved in Save Sandy Beach. So Mike has this history in the state of Hawaii and a resolute defender of the environment. Um, and, and he's demonstrated that for all the good reasons. Uh, so Mike is the uh, part of the IUCN, uh, one of the commissions that is regulating their elections uh, for the second half of the Congress. But like I said, Mike and um, uh, Justice uh, Benjamin are friends from a long time. And actually, I think Justice Benjamin picked Mike to be part of that that group. And he is Hawaii's first the judge uh, for our environmental court. Absolutely. And we and Vermont are the only states to have an environmental court. Yeah, you you know Hawaii should be very proud of itself because we lead and put things on the table across many spectrums um, that that talk about the benefit of the community for the community. So we've done a lot of things, and, and that environmental court is one of them. Um, so with the, with the IUCN coming to town, there, there, are different, there are going to be different people who have never been here before, organizations that have never been here before. And um, how is this uh, affecting, just in the planning stages, what's, what's happening here locally? Can you, can you see some, some effects already? So when you look at the, the profile of I, IUCN and the members, it's, um, they have 185-member countries, of which you know for sure 160 will come. So that diverse group across the globe, uh, scientists and NGOs and governments and interested parties in conservation will all be here. And we will be able to showcase uh, the state of Hawaii uh, to a broad range of constituencies that really talk about conservation on a daily basis. So one, the, the breadth of the, the uh, opportunity is tremendous. And as we know, some of the major environmental issues uh, in December, uh, COP21 in Paris, had significant discussions about climate change and its effect across the spectrum, uh, which all impact us here in Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is a microcosm of all these issues that are happening. Yeah. Is and there a particular theme for this conference? The Congress's uh, theme is called Planet at the Crossroads. Okay. Because we, we truly have to make decisions in order to, to move the dial in the right direction uh, that helps the planet. If we don't care for this place, it can't care for us. Right. But, and how is the IUCN going to make that happen? Well, out of the Congress will come a thing called the Hawaii Commitments. Mm -hmm. And what the Hawaii Commitments describe is the agenda for the next four years for conservation across the planet. So that opportunity is, is going to be tremendous. There are two parts to the Congress. The first part is called the Forum, and the second part is called the Members' Assembly. The second part really deals with their parliamentary uh, and elections and their process. So that kind of housekeeping, right. organizational stuff. Correct. Uh, on, the structure. On, like, on, the, on the international scale, though. Very much so. Yeah. Uh, this year's president is from China. Um, so it's, and they'll hold an election for that position again. 
but on the front part is the forum where that active, robust discussions about what should be on the agenda of IUCN going forward. What are the issues uh, that affect marine, that affect um, our, our endangered species, our protected areas? How are we going to move the dial forward? What has changed in the last four years and what should be priority one through whatever it is? Um, that's, that's where the discussion takes place. Are there specific measurements or ways of gauging impact um, from the previous four years? Yes, uh, and that will be reported out at the Congress. Um, I'll give you an example. There is a thing called journeys, and, and Hawaii submitted uh, subject matter for the journeys. And for Hawaii, the two journeys um, is, has to do with biosecurity. And we have seen the effect of biosecurity uh, with, with the fire ants and the koki frogs and the gall wasp. How do we manage that introduction and, and create the barriers we need to prevent that from, from accessing the island? So biosecurity is high on the list. Uh, and then really the Pacific Island Initiative. What, what is going to happen to the Pacific Islands with, with the rising tides and the global warming that are causing the polar ice caps to melt? Acid, acidification of, of the, the ocean, the, the degradation Coral of reefs. the reefs. Um, you know, I'm not a biologist or a scientist, but what is really important is how do we get the uninvolved involved? And this, when that, you know, when that spotlight hits us, we have a tremendous opportunity to showcase all the things we've done, what we need to do, and how we're looking forward. And as far as the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as the structure, so you said there's there's two sections. There's the the forum and then the 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 members like, assembly. Members assembly. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, access will be for members only in the second half. Is that right? And but yes, there there are allowing some some uh, participation by the members that aren't involved in the members assembly side, the folks that are heavily involved in the forum, the, there will be an exhibit and pavilion display at the convention center um, and uh, open to the public. So we'll talk a little bit about, about that and, and what to expect. Okay, well let's come back and talk a lot more about that. Okay. <laughs> Just in a minute. Uh, namaskar and hello. I am Anu Hittel and I host a show on climate change. It's called Climate Change Beyond Outrage. And in it, we go beyond outrage to look at solutions to global climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. Join me every Tuesday at 1 o'clock Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha, namaskar, and goodbye. Aloha, my name is Jeff James, and I'd like to invite you to watch my show, The Military in Hawaii. It'll be shown every Friday at 11 a.m. here on thinktech.com. Aloha. Aloha, this is Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy María Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en ThinkTech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. We're back with Randall Sanaka, uh, who is our uh, executive director of Hawaii's World Conservation Congress National Host Committee. I got it all this time. <laughs> Here on Hawaii is my mainland. If you have um, student, uh, students, if you have questions, um, uh, tweet us at Think Tech Hawaii spelled out. No, three, Think Tech Hawaii, H-I. Think Tech H-I. Think Tech H-I. Um, we did have some tweets last week, and that's always kind of fun. Mm. But. How are our, our, our local uh, conservation? We have so many cool little conservation groups and projects. Um, how, how are they going to be a part of this? You know, it, it's funny. When we, about a year ago, we were up at the Manoa Culture Center and um, we we're talking about the event. And um, 
we're talking with Sam Cooke, who, who passed God away. bless him, who passed away, who, who is another hero of the environment. And, Absolutely. And so we're talking, and, and you know, Sam asked me, if there was one thing that comes out of this, what do you, what do you hope that comes out of it? I said, I said, I hope we can, through the education process, make people aware and just raise the level of awareness and amplify the noise about what's happening to, to the environment and how they can contribute. If we can succeed in that area, then we are building the base for the future. Um, and you know, as as I've continued on this journey, I think the important part is is not to kick the can down the road. We can't. We shouldn't leave it for the kids. In today's meeting, I, I said, you know, our obligation is to the kupuna who gave us this opportunity. We have a responsibility to them, uh, the current generation that could be part of the problem, and is part of the problem. Thank you. <laughs> and how we help and the inheritance we give to the next generation, the legacy we give to them is not in such disrepair that it takes them even more to, to restore it. So I think that when we get all of that done and if we can accomplish a good part of that, um, then we will succeed. Now back to the student question is uh, there is going to be student days uh, that we're going to invite a whole bunch of kids through, through one of the working groups and through uh, Kupu. John Leong's folks, they're really helping shepherd the K through 12 program uh, to get students involved. Do you have any idea how, how many students will be we're able to take? We're trying to get them all, right? And it, it's an ambitious task. Um, First Lady Don Ige is on yes, the team. She's an awesome woman. Yeah, she is um, a, a champion and a, a heroine of what, what we're trying to accomplish. And she knows the process in the Department of Education. So she's helped us think about how we approach this. Because there is a tremendous amount of things being done in the schools now that create that awareness. So how do we, how do we move that dial forward? Um, so there's, there's a lot of activity going on. Stephen Schatz, uh, who is also in DOE, they're doing an assessment now, trying to figure out what is being done in the schools not from a curriculum standpoint, but from a classroom by classroom project basis. So there's a lot of, it's amazing what's going on. The, um, I'm glad to hear, that, so that's on the DOE side. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad to hear that. It's been um, disheartening on, on a few uh, conservation organizations. And um, you know, when I hear like they, they can't take the kids out in the ocean, they can't be in a canoe with yeah. water, it's just wrong. Yeah. It's just wrong. We have, and and the DOE kids especially. We, they're they're the salt of our earth. Yeah. And I am a former DOE kid. <laughs> and um, I, you know, we we have to do better about bringing, educating them, um, about the place they live in and making them feel safe and and loving these precious environments. Yeah. They have to have access to do that. And you've got to connect them. You know, through urbanization, we've kind of separated and, and caused this disconnect. So say there's, there's not enough of a connection to make them understand or have an appreciation of the environment we, we live in. So, you know, can you imagine a kid that lives in Chicago in the city, what is his connection, her connection, to the environment, to the place, as they live in these beautiful high rises, but there's no connection. Mm -hmm. So the more we distance and make that separation, we lose that connection. So it, it's a bigger project, but it's it's something that needs to be talked about, amplified, and how do we get them there? I, I'm I was shocked when I um, talked to a, a group of kids and say, so how many of you know how to swim? <laughs> <laughs> You'd think they all do, but no. no. Anyway, but that connection. So the ICUN is going to, uh, um, I would imagine, create quite a bit of excitement for them to be able to participate in something. Yes. So what will the actual participation look like? What is there going to be for them to do? Or is that known? Um, part of it is known. Um, there's sessions. Um, the all the schools will be invited to, to come to the exhibit, 
over those, those periods of, of days. Um, there is a thing called the conservation campus uh, that is really focused at, at the higher grades to, to engage people in these roundtable discussions to talk about the environment and conservation. There's a program with the East-West Center um, that is engaging 50 schools in the Asia-Pac arena virtually. Um, the schools or universities? Uh, schools. Wow, okay. The university portion is tied with uh, um, the University of Hawaii, and David Lasner and his team have embraced this tremendously. Um, that there's a program that are, they're allowing a certification program online for students across, across the globe if they want to engage. We have also Cornell uh, involved in it, and I think Brown, there's five universities involved in it. So what kind of a cert certification? They have programs, uh, certification, certificates in conservation and okay. environment management, and they'll do that program online and get a certificate for that. And, and but how does the I IUCN play into that? They're going to be able to somehow... They're promoting it with these uh, other universities, and they have a youth program also. Now, what's interesting at IUCN, they consider youth from 25 years old to 45 years old. Well, I, I still don't qualify. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm close we, to youth. <laughs> yeah. No, and so, so, you know, it's, it's an interesting, you know, we consider youth K through 12, right? Yeah, right. 25 to 45. Well. So, so um, those are the, the opportunities. And if you go onto the website, iucn.org, you can navigate through that and look at some of the programs. Okay. It's um, uh, sometimes a fun channel challenge to navigate that. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Um, We're working on that one. Good. <laughs> um, so the, um, will there, how will we, who are not part of these member organizations, be able to participate? Well, there's, there's a, they've created a comma in a rate. Do you know if, what that is? Uh, no, I, I don't recall offhand, but there okay. is also a day pass and a two-day pass. Okay. So once the agenda comes out and there's a particular day where the sessions of your interests are, you may want to pick up that, that day pass. Do you have a, a, a rough estimate of when that information will be available at IUCN.org? There, it's actually the preliminaries are online now. The okay. sessions are online, so you can. It just came up about two or three weeks ago, so you can get online now and take a look at them. Yeah, and, and, and it crosses the gamut in terms of, you know, like I say, marine and ocean and protected areas, invasive species, um, environmental law. It's all there. So the <coughs> when they um, <coughs> when when they are here. Um, they're not going to spend all their time in Waikiki, are they? We have, one of the things that um, we have engineered is excursions. And they're actually 70 some odd excursions throughout the state. Hawaii wow, that's Island, fantastic. Uh, Maui and Kauai and Oahu. Um, and what, we're, what we've done is, if you can imagine, there were the highest submission of papers ever in their, the history of IUCN. Uh, of the 1,500, 300 came from the U.S. Of the U.S. submissions, 80-some were from Hawaii, about 20% of the lift. Wow. Yeah, so from a racial standpoint, Hawaii did extraordinarily well. <laughs> and kudos to the people that organized that and the teams here and, and the folks, the, the conservation-minded folks, getting all the troops together and saying, listen, we need to put as much on deck so whatever we get, it's, it's another win for the state. So what we've done is we've, now that we know what has been accepted, we've tied excursions, we're building excursions to the sessions. So if you go to a session, you should consider this excursion. So it brings the relevancy and the reality tied to the academia and the discussion. So we're doing all of that. Are the excursions going to be within that um, period, that 10-day period, or? It's they... three, three opportunities, pre, before Congress, when the forum shifts out to the membership assembly, because not everyone will go to the membership assembly, and post. So there's three buckets, so to speak, of that opportunity. And that's up, up online. Sessions, are, uh, the excursions are up online. More coming every day. Wow, uh, so still adding. Oh, yeah, we'll still add. We'll Great. still add. Um, I can hardly think of any place 
where um, there are so many really small um, conservation organizations. Um, you know, almost every little ahupua has yep. its own mm -hmm. has its own homegrown, and I think that 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 is our that is our strength. Yes. Um, and I'm wondering how those folks um, might be able to um, who aren't the larger organizations. Is, so we we work quite closely with the Hawaii Conservation Alliance. Okay. And yeah. so they have been they're a partner. They've been with us since the the beginning of the marathon. Um, and in another month or so, there's an outreach program to each of the neighbor islands. They're they're getting in all their uh, partners, their conservation partners, to talk about what the event is, to let them give them more updates where we are, and that's going to be the opportunity as we hear back from from constituency so to speak mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll go back to the drawing board and say we need to re-engine here or we need to recalibrate here so there's still opportunity to get involved okay so these groups uh, these sessions are <coughs> going to be managed not by your no. office but by the um, the conservation right. um, council um, no the it's still through IUCN but we're using um, the uh, Conservation Alliance's network to continue saying this session is up, this session is up, so we'll talk about how you can participate. Maybe you should take the day pass route. Maybe your organization needs to send somebody for the full gamut or, you know, take a two-day pass. So that's, we're going to now finesse it, really, now that we know what session's on deck. I'm really happy to hear that that's going to the neighbor islands too i just feel so bad sometimes that there's these wonderful things that that happen on oahu is there going to be any sort of um virtual uh there is a streaming part to it uh, we're we're working on that you know streaming doesn't is not as dynamic as we'd like it to be for a session <laughs> so we're trying to figure figure out how how uh, to best um stream content and uh, a whole bunch of things so so we will probably be able to um, watch live oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, the question is what sessions and um, some may be delayed broadcast because of just our you know we've got sitting in the middle of the Pacific we've got probably the most uh, crossover places that that we can do these sessions and they can pick it up where it's not two o'clock in the morning over there so uh, that'll be part of the bundle great um, all right well let's take another short break and then come back and talk more aloha my name is Richard Emery and I host condo insider we talk about issues facing the condo association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions when you think about it, about one-third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Justine Espiritu, and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at fintechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. <laughs> Welcome back to Hawaii is by Mainland here with Randall Tanaka of the IUCN, where we're going to be inviting 10,000 people to um, see how fabulously we protect our gorgeous environment here. And, um, and they'll be here in the beginning of September, 1st through 10th, and then poof, then you go on a long vacation. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's always some paperwork you gotta come <laughs> But um, okay, so there, all this excitement, all this, um, good stuff happening at the end of it there will be um we will have our hawaii um they weren't called goals what were they called hawaii commitments commitments the hawaii commitments and do we have any idea how many commitments we're gonna have um well there's there's two parts to that the hawaii commitments that come out of the congress uh, are really global issues 
and they're called the Hawaii Commitments because the conference is here. Jeju had their set, um, part of IUCN, um, they manage the World Parks Council, which happens every 10 years, and out of that came the promise of Sydney. But Hawaii will forevermore be, be um, in, the, in the archives of, of IUCN because the conference was here. The, so, first, the first United the States one. First U.S. World Conservation Congress. And I, I was reading today, there's a, this is also a big anniversary for, for um, yes. the 100th anniversary of the, the wildlife, national, the no, national, national parks. parks. National, national parks, parks. yes. And, in, in 1916, um, the dedication of the national park system happened. Um, at the same time, Mauna Kea and Haleakala are part of that. Uh, so it's a the Volcanoes National Park. It's a wonderful coincidence. You know, I, it's also the 100th anniversary of the Migratory Bird Treaty <laughs> Act. <laughs> yeah, it, I don't it, know what was happening <laughs> happening back then in 1916, <laughs> but everybody woke up uh, to conservation. <laughs> you know, when when we were on this journey in the very beginnings with with Chipper and we were in the hunt, and you know there were hundreds of moments that we should have been kicked off the field, right? We competed with eight countries, and uh, you know a, a state cannot hunt this piece of business. It has to be a country. So we're going down this parallel path without the complete sanctioning of the U.S. government. Um, we had a champion, two champions in our court, uh, uh, Senator Inouye, um, who truly understood the significance of the place and where we stood in. in the global opportunity, and foreigner, former Governor Abercrombie, who also was a champion of this. And we're fortunate that the current administration and Governor Ige and Mike McCartney are also championing the, the cause because they all understand um, its significance. When we did APEC, um, Mike and I were sitting down and talking, and he had a discussion with David Carey at Outrigger. He said, what is even more important than a successful Congress is our ability to look at ourselves and say we can do these kinds of things from a state standpoint. So it built, rebuilt our self-esteem, says, hey, we can do this. We can play with the best on the field. So that, that has that impact. So you know, as we talk about legacy, what is it going to look like after Congress? Uh, tremendous opportunity. That's where the value will come from for the state. Um, can you throw any specifics at that? Well, I think, you know, what, when, when, when you look at the ec economic side of the envelope, what, what will be our export from this? And really, it's the intellectual knowledge that, that we have gained from, the, from learning from the, the folks that are here and them learning uh, what we do. It could be an export for, for DLNR. And, you know, the, the folks at DLNR should be congratulated. They do, they're the, the, the defender of, of and of the place. And they work hard and you got some real dedicated people. They're so, unbelievable. Yeah, they, the amount of work they do with the limited resources they get, it's astonishing. They are heroes. Yeah, they're, they're, they have the passion for it. So, um, you know, uh, Suzanne Case and the team are doing a great job. I mean, it's not easy. You know, with, with what has happened this year with the high surf and all of that, and you know, they've, they've done an outstanding job. So. You know, when you see a deal in our guy, you know, thank them. They're doing a great I, job for I, us. I pretty much do. I, 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 my day job's at the legislature, so if I see Suzanne in case, I'm like, yay, yeah, keep it's going, girl. Job. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> and, and, and the, the challenges just don't, don't stop. No. Rapid Ohia death, yeah. dengue. I mean, what's next? The, yeah. the, I mean, their theme should be, could I, can I get a break? Can I get a break here? <laughs> but they're doing a great job. They're, they're, they're doing their job. They're they're giving it their best, um, and and they have a lot of support. You know, every 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 organization and, and department needs more assistance, but they're they're doing the best that they can with what they have. So, as far as the um, the conservation community here in Hawaii, that is not um, aren't the 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 I think how many member organizations were there? There were eight at one point, but then I think maybe. A couple more came on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact number, but you know, it's all the federal agencies, it's you know, the Museum. NGOs, yeah, Bishop Museum. You know, yeah. and, and speaking of the Bishop Museum, I mean, Blair Collis is on our, our board. You know, they're the the best repository in the Pacific of 
all the stuff out there, they do an outstanding job. Um, and, and somebody has to be the keeper of the history of, of the, the things and, and be able to tell the story from, from a place. Uh, and they're doing a, a great job. The Hawaii Green Growth Initiatives, Aloha Plus Challenge are all part of the, when we look at the future going forward, they're all in their, their, their places and will carry the ball for Will us. they be the, um, will they, Celeste Connors, that group, um, Hawaii Green Growth, will um, they be playing a role here they, at the... IUCN? They actually are playing a role now. They're uh, one of our working groups called the Legacy Committee, and, and they have working groups under that. But their, their task is to look at how we uh, materialize the benefits from the Congress. Uh, how do we talk about the Aloha Plus Challenge on a global scale? How do we help yeah. the federal government saying, this is what we've done, this is how we measure it, this is how we execute it? This is what a lot of states should be looking at. And, and they have already people reaching out to them and saying, what are you guys doing here? Um, so it's, it's a tremendous opportunity. So there's been a lot of government uh, involvement? Yes. Sounds mm -hmm. like. Yeah, um, fish and wildlife, the federal agencies, the national parks. Everybody's energized. But we, we should not lose sight of when we put this together and, and Tim Johns and I were talking, there's a thing called obligation and opportunity. We understand the obligation, that's, that's clearly defined, but how do we take advantage of the opportunity? If we're just doing another conference, this may, may not make much sense, but the opportunities post-conference, even, you know, we have the Coral Reef Symposium coming up in June. Okay. Uh, there's a discussion now to get some of the best biologists that, that deal with mosquitoes as a vector to transmitting diseases, um, being talked about with a guy named Ken Kanashiro at the University of Hawaii. The University of Hawaii's team uh, in the environment area, you, you would be amazingly surprised about the kinds of awards and where their, their discussions are and uh, Lasner and, and company, you know, we kind of grind on them and the measure of success is not a football team, the measure of success is, is how uh, our, we're educating the next generation. Um, and, and they're doing a great job. And how we're solving the problems mm -hmm. that, that we have currently. So uh, is when in, in the um, context of the IUCN, it was just occurred to me was you were talking about UH and so forth. Is, um, does, is there an energy element to that? Is there um, There's. It's there, a funny nexus. Yes. But we know that without proper management of energy, how do you manage the climate change issue? Yeah. How do you do the carbon credits? All, right. all of that. So, so is that? It's, it's, it's an indirect link, but everybody is well aware of that's the 800 pound gorilla. Yeah. In the room. Yes, yes. So, will, will, that, will that be addressed? I mean, I'm just thinking of the conversations that we have practically every day here in Hawaii mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, the price of fuel and the price of energy and how we're going to get it and the effects of that and, and then conserving those natural resources. You know, when I was at the convention center and solar was just really in, in its beginning, we went across the country and looked at facilities, large facilities, convention centers, the San Francisco Moscone Center. We went to, to Utah. We went to <clears throat> Long Beach to look at installations. Uh, we went to Vegas, which has virtually no installations because their energy cost is only about eight cents per kilowatt hour because it comes from the dam. Now, state of Hawaii, we were running at that time about 28, 29 cents a kilowatt hour. There's that economic incentive to do that. So, you know, everyone has played a role in trying to reduce that fuel burn, that petroleum source of energy through wind, pho photovoltaic. We're getting there. We, we are leaders in that arena uh, across the globe. Specifically for the IUCN, are, are there going to be things that we can really be proud of because we're um, having this con Congress, this conference, and doing it in an environmentally sustainable way? There is a requirement in the hosting agreement that we demonstrate green practices. You'll be within uh, DBED, Economic Development and Tourism, they have a program that 
are engaged with the hotels, the hotel community on green green hotels and green practices. That is being that is one of the criteria to be part of the hotel room block, and the folks uh, <clears throat> at DBIT are doing a great job. I mean, it, and this is giving them a chance to talk to more hotels. So uh, are, it, it, are we going to see things like water stations instead of bottled water? Absolutely. Yes. The, this is a low paper. Um, if you're in 20 minutes walking distance of the convention center, you walk. Um, there, it's a no plastic bottle. Oh. Congress. Oh, so I'm all, so excited. How so, about no styrofoam? Yeah. Oh, yeah, styrofoam is no. It's All not, right. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's uh, bamboo chopsticks only. Uh, no, well, <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> but you know, we're we're engaging. It's all part of that that process. So it's 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 a great opportunity. So when we talk about opportunity, here's the chance, right, to demonstrate. Oh so well. We're quite excited. Now I'm I'm getting even more excited yeah. because that's that's. That's, I think, an, an opportunity. So mm -hmm. often we're so busy looking at the bottom line that we, you know, say, oh, make excuses for those for those kinds of things. Ah, oh, it's just a bottle of water, you know. Yeah. Uh, this is the reason for, you know, and if, you know, market forces dictate a lot of things. If we don't consume bottled water, uh, plastic bottles, then the market forces will, will shift. Um, so, you know, by, it, it's changing our habits demonstrating that we can change our habits and so this will be a, a great example on, on what we do as a community and then so scale it up is there is there a, a, a list somewhere of the, the that how that com that commitment to being sustainable uh, translates into it's it's on the it once again on, on the, the website, website right the, the green practices okay so it, yeah, great there. great well, thank you, Randall, for coming over and, and chatting with us here at Think Tech Hawaii. Um, there's a lot more that's going to be happening um, in the this, today, in five months to the day. Yeah, I, I count only four because uh, we, we, we shall be ready at four. Good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, more to come. Yeah. Aloha.